Hello, my name is Scott Mann, and I'm an ear, nose, and throat surgeon at the University of Colorado. We are in our anatomy lab today to demonstrate on human cadavers the technique of emergent cricothyrotomy. This demonstration is geared to the non-surgeon group of providers who are infrequently but importantly called upon to perform this life-saving procedure when emergent airway access is needed but can't be achieved through the oral or nasal approach. We will demonstrate two techniques today. Both involve inserting airways through the cricothyroid membrane using a small number of steps. These techniques are the scalpel, bougie, and 6O endotracheal tube method and cricothyrotomy kit method. The scalpel, bougie, and 6O endotracheal tube method should be feasible in any hospital and even non-hospital settings where scalpel and intubation tools are available. It is the first method you should become competent at performing. The cricothyrotomy kit method requires a special kit, and not all hospitals or healthcare settings have this available. This approach may be preferred by non-surgeons as it has a familiar Seldinger technique. However, it is important to keep in mind that institutions may stock a slightly different kit than the one used today. First, let's review the anatomy of this region of the neck. The anterior neck contains the cartilaginous framework of the airway the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, and the trachea. The most easily palpable landmark is the notch at the superior border of the thyroid cartilage. Moving inferiorly, the prominent ring of the cricoid can also be felt. Between the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage is a soft area that coincides with the cricothyroid membrane. In both techniques, this is the area you will enter. Identify the cricothyroid membrane, both visually and by touch. Understand, however, that an emergent cricothyrotomy is a procedure that is mostly performed by palpation. It requires identification of landmarks even with poor visualization. To ensure success in the presence of blood or secretions, the anatomy of this area should be easily identified, even with your eyes closed. You can practice on yourself or a willing colleague while wearing gloves to better understand this anatomy and gain some muscle memory. Using our first cadaver, medical student Katerina is going to demonstrate how to quickly locate the cricothyroid membrane. First, palpate the thyroid notch. Then move your finger inferior to palpate the cricoid cartilage. The cricothyroid membrane is the small, soft region between these structures. It is best felt with the tip of your finger. After locating this region, you are ready to perform the procedure. We'll first demonstrate the scalpel, bougie, and 6O endotracheal tube method. All you need is a number 11 or number 15 blade scalpel, which are usually stocked in emergency airway carts. A flexible, intubating or airway exchange catheter, such as a bougie catheter, and a 6O or smaller endotracheal tube. A 6O tube is perfect for almost all adults and is typically available in most hospital settings and on code carts. A 5O ET tube will work as well, but is less often stocked outside of the anesthesia setting. Set up your equipment within easy reach beforehand, and if you have time, maintain a sterile field by properly prepping and draping the anterior neck. However, when time is critical, do not worry about sterility. First. Use your dominant hand and locate the cricothyroid membrane. You can hold and stabilize the larynx with your other hand to help. Next, make a vertical midline incision in the skin over where you felt the cricothyroid membrane. The length and depth of this incision depends on the situation, but it is usually at least two centimeters in length. Palpate again within the wound with your finger to confirm the cricothyroid membrane. If you need a bigger incision, extend what you have with the scalpel. Next, turn your scalpel 90 degrees and incise the cricothyroid membrane with a horizontal incision. One often feels a give or a pop when the airway is entered. You will also likely observe a gush of air or bubbles. It is normal for the patient to cough at this point, and also blood will likely now be obscuring your view but you can continue to rely on your palpation. Notice how Katerina keeps her finger in the wound to keep her place. The membrane incision can also be widened using either your finger or by inserting the handle of your scalpel 
and twisting. Next, insert the bougie into the incised membrane and advance it at least 10 centimeters or about four inches. Holding the bougie at the level of the skin, advance the endotracheal tube over the bougie and into the airway. This will require firm pressure and sometimes a twisting motion. Advance the tube into the airway about four finger breadths or eight centimeters. Holding the tube securely, remove the bougie, inflate the endotracheal tube cuff, and ventilate the patient. Check for proper location by CO2 detection methods, lung auscultation, or bronchoscopy. Secure the tube at the skin entry site with sutures or tape. It is critical that the tube is not dislodged. Once endotracheal placement is confirmed, be sure the patient is sedated, has pain relief, and is restrained, and thus unable to self-extubate. When able, you should also consult a surgeon. Most cricothyroidotomy patients will need additional procedures to ensure safe and stable airway moving forward. The second method requires a special cricothyroidotomy kit. In this case, we will demonstrate the use of a Cook Emergency Cricothyroidotomy catheter set. Emergency physician, Dr. Katherine Mayer, will show you the components of this kit and demonstrate the modified Saldinger technique. The equipment needed for this technique includes a trocar needle and syringe for entering the cricothyroid membrane, a wire that will be advanced through the trocar needle, a scalpel for enlarging the trocar wound, and a 6-0 external diameter cricothyrotomy tube with removable dilator. Set up your equipment within easy reach and quickly prep and drape the area if time allows. First, locate the cricothyroid membrane and keep your finger over the area. Using the trocar needle and syringe, puncture the cricothyroid membrane while pulling back on the syringe. When you break through the membrane, air will be easily pulled back through the syringe. Quickly remove the syringe and advance the wire through the needle. Your patient may cough with this maneuver. This is normal. Remove the needle and hold the wire securely in your non-dominant hand. Next, make an incision with your scalpel at the wire entry point, horizontally through the skin and cricothyroid membrane. Advance the cricothyrotomy tube with its integral dilator over the guide wire. Point the tip inferiorly at the skin incision and advance it along the wire using a curved, smooth motion. If it is difficult to advance through the skin and tissues, use your scalpel to make a larger incision. After advancing the tube to its hub, remove the dilator and secure the tube with your fingers. Inflate the cricothyrotomy tube cuff, ventilate the patient, and check for proper location by CO2 detection methods, lung auscultation, or bronchoscopy. Secure the tube using the attached ties and be sure the patient is sedated, has pain relief, and is restrained, thus unable to self-extubate. Consult your surgeon as a more secure and revised airway may be best. In special circumstances, the approach to the cricothyrotomy may need to be adjusted. The most common difficulty encountered is when the anterior neck anatomy is not readily identified. This can occur if the neck is edematous, if hematoma is present, or in morbid obesity. If the cricothyroid membrane is not palpable, modify your technique by making a long midline incision over the likely location. Do not be concerned with damaging critical structures, just stay in the midline. Palpation can then be repeated within the wound to identify the location of the membrane and the rest of the procedure can proceed. Another difficulty commonly encountered is a large amount of bleeding. Inadvertent injury to a larger blood vessel or of the thyroid isthmus can create an impressive amount of hemorrhage. However, this is rarely life-threatening. If a large amount of bleeding is encountered, proceed with the cricothyrotomy using palpation alone. Assistance can help with blotting or with suctioning, but do not pause the procedure for bleeding. Your focus should only be on securing the airway. After the airway is secured and the patient is safely ventilating, use gauze and continuous pressure on the wound to control continued blood loss. Because a properly placed incision is near midline, the largest vessels encountered are usually veins of the external jugular system. Pressure is likely to be sufficient in controlling this bleeding while you consult your surgical colleagues. Here are a few points to remember about performing a cricothyrotomy. 
take a deep breath before doing this procedure, stay calm, and move with deliberation. Account for your instruments after the procedure with a special attention to your sharps. And remember, doing a cricothyrotomy is not a failure. The failure is not acting when a patient needs an airway. Practice these techniques even if just re-watching this video at regular intervals to keep your skills fresh. By acting promptly, you give your patient time and time is brain.